Having the prison here, having the inmates here is the right thing to do. I don't want to grow old with him out of state. You don't have hope in that place and I don't know how you can make it. The end product is impeccable. You'd never get it built for that again, ever. If, if we continue to utilize Colorado, you're looking at today sending $20 million a year down to Colorado. You're paying for local workers down there, but the majority of that money is going to a corporate entity, and it's gone. Having your son out of state is very, very difficult. I remember when he moved from Seward to Anchorage and said, Mom, I'm going to be leaving. And then I was driving there on Sunday. I got there. I was like, I'm here to see my son. And they were like, he's gone. And I just remember that just hitting me so hard. I can't drive to go see him. I, I, have to, I have to fly. And he's been there almost two years and I've only gone to go see him one time. Not everybody can afford that. Now, when you consider why are we housing prisoners outside, it was one, lack of facilities, and two, cost effective. I'm not sure that cost effective incarceration is really part of the discussion. And looking at Colorado as the place to house inmates, is that the right spot? Is that the most cost effective place to do it? Or is South America the most cost effective place to do it? Or is the Middle East the most cost effective place to do it? I think when you bring the argument of cost effective prison housing of inmates, the whole discussion is undone and unwound. So having the prison here, having the inmates here is the right thing to do. Uh, SB 65 was our attempt to take care of the shortage of beds we had in this state. We feel like our state should be taking care of our prisoners in our state. Senate Bill 65 came up with a very clever concept uh, aided by our borough that uh, said if local government would participate in the program and in the project, uh, there would be participation with the state and uh, a long-term contract for the facility. The Matsu Borough, as I recall, was the only unit of government that chose to participate. Bethel had an opportunity, Fairbanks, any city that wanted to build uh, a state facility in their subject area. So I applaud the Matsu Borough where we are today at this beautiful facility. Well done and uh, gonna be ready to use. The project on time and on budget with no controversy. I mean, I don't think there's an, uh, another public word project that you can point to that hasn't had major overruns dollar overruns, the airport project, hundreds of millions of dollars with a national contractor. Um, a lot of large general contractors, they lie in wait for the bad drawings, you know, and, and uh, they parlay it into millions of dollars in change orders. When we're, when we're in the team as a, as a design build contractor, we can't have change orders because we were part of the process. What do we what do we say? Oh, sorry, we missed it during the design. We guarantee that we are not going to miss it, and so that's why it's done on time and on budget, as economically as it was built. You know, the the budget was set by the state law. We sold bonds that complied with that budget, and we've actually constructed a facility that is less than that. Um, we have money left in the project that is authorized to help outfit the facility. Um, it wasn't a requirement to outfit it, but because of the fact that we were able to build it cheaper, we're able to go ahead and outfit this. And those are costs that the state's not gonna have to come up with. 
The site itself they've described as being one of the best construction sites we could find. There's very little imported material and for, for people that don't understand what that is, the, there's a lot of gravel and sand soil types that you need to construct a facility like this. They were able to find everything on site. In, in that sense, it was very economical because we saved that cost of bringing those materials in. Um, you know, it, it's not out in the middle of nowhere. We're 30 minutes from downtown Wasilla um, on a well-maintained road um, between the state and the borough. I mean, access out to this site is very easy to get to. The, the workers, the majority of the workers that were on site, and that number peaked out at over 300 workers a day, the majority of those were coming from the Matsu Borough. So that's payroll placed right into the hands of our residents. Now, once they transition into an operations phase, DOC has projected up to 350 full-time positions. These are good paying jobs. You know, it, it's not an anchor project. It wasn't designed to build a community. You know, but what we're getting out of it is that economic driver of those jobs. And in today's economy, anything that you can do to create these jobs is going to help. We would have laid 60 to 80 people off, and there would have been another 200 or so that would not have been employed without that project for, an, for two and a half years, would not have been employed. I think it would have increased the uh, unemployment in the valley dramatically you know, for the construction industry. I think we have a big problem by housing our inmates in Colorado as opposed to Alaska. Two out of three of our inmates return back into custody within three years. We need to give them a chance to return back to be productive members of society. Colorado really didn't provide that opportunity. Here at Goose Creek, I think we have tremendous opportunity to provide a hands-on practical skills and training for the inmates. Computers, um, automotive, carpentry. These are items that can be done, will be done at Goose Creek and that's why I think this is a, a great opportunity not only to bring our people back and put the money back in Alaska but get our members back to work being productive members of society. Having the inmates home during the time they are paying their debt to society they can interact with their families one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, not on the phone, which has proven over time helps them more easily integrate back into society once they're released. How do you recoup an inmate? How do you return him to society when you've removed him from his society? He's coming out of there. He's coming out of there and we're all going to be there the day that he does. I can't even imagine being an inmate and not having family. Thank you.